Welcome to the Giant's Causeway, the most iconic site in Northern Ireland, located on the spectacular Causeway coast on the northern tip of the island of Ireland. A stunning windswept national landmark composed of some 40,000 basalt columns that were formed by volcanic activity between 50 and 60 million years ago, the Giant's Causeway is steeped in enthralling geological history. But equally, a number of legends that have propelled this unusual landform to hold a special, almost mythical status. On this walk, we'll talk in depth about the mythology and geology behind the Giant's Causeway as we climb its mighty columns, stare out across the crashing waves and explore the majestic landscape of cliffs that tower over this famous natural spot. Now Northern Ireland is home to many spectacular natural landmarks, from Loch Ney, the largest lake in the UK, to the mighty Mourne Mountains. But the Giant's Causeway is what most people think of when they think of this part of the world. But where exactly in Northern Ireland would you find the Giant's Causeway? Well, as you can see from this map, the Giant's Causeway is located on the northern coast of Northern Ireland's County Antrim, just a few miles away from the popular inland distillery town of Bushmills and about eight miles along the coast from the seaside resort of Port Rush. There are many fascinating places to explore, both natural and man-made, along what's known as the Causeway Coast which looks out towards the almost always rough waves of the Atlantic Ocean. At this point of the Causeway coast, the towering cliffs sweep down dramatically to this point, a fairly small but highly unusual natural landform that now stands as one of the most visited destinations in all of Northern Ireland. People from right across the world flock to this point of Northern Ireland's coast, but what exactly makes the Giant's Causeway so special? Well, apart from the magnificent scenery that surrounds the causeway itself, the astonishingly regular appearance of the stones that we're walking on now, which almost look like they were built expressly to be stepped on by human feet, are one feature of the Giant's Causeway that makes it unlike any other place in the world. As we mentioned, these stones have stood here for as many as 60 million years, originally formed during a period of significant volcanic activity when successive flows of lava met with the sea, causing a rapid cooling that formed the rock known as basalt. Over the millennia, more and more layers of basalt built up to form columns, with the pressure between each of these columns causing them to divide into polygon shapes which look just like stepping stones. That being said, there are still elements of the geology of the Giant's Causeway that remain a mystery. Geologists having studied these magnificent columns in depth for the best part of 300 years. But the mystery of the Giant's Causeway isn't merely limited to its geology, as this notable point of the Causeway coast is also a famous site in Irish mythology, and a legend which gives the Giant's Causeway its name. The story goes that a man of extraordinary height named Fian McCool, or Finn McCool, built the causeway as a means of reaching Scotland, which lies just 25 miles away beyond the horizon as we look out to sea here. Why exactly Finn McCool wanted to get to Scotland is unclear. Some stories say that it was simply a way for Finn, also a figure of Scottish mythology, to make his way between Scotland and Ireland without getting his feet wet. Other stories say that he was in love with a giant woman living on the tiny Scottish island of Staffa in the Inner Hebrides, where similar rock formations of basalt columns can be found at Fingal's Cave, which is often regarded as the other end of the Giant's Causeway. That would mean the causeway across the sea would have been over 80 miles in length. However, while most stories do link this point of the Irish coast with the Scottish island of Staffa, the tale of why Finn McCool wanted to cross the sea is most popularly one not of romance, but rivalry. We'll talk more about the legend of Finn McCool's rivalry in a short while, but here we've come as far as I dare step out to sea, as the waves crashing against the shore are beginning to submerge the stones of the giant's causeway beneath the water. As you can see from the darker colour of the stones just up ahead, the tide is coming in at the moment, 
and at its highest point, the vast majority of the stones of the Giant's Causeway are hidden beneath the water, with just a number of its tallest columns poking out above the waves. Conversely, at low tide, you can walk even further out along the causeway as it narrows to just a few columns rising out of the sea. So do check the tide times if you're planning to visit, depending on how much of the Giant's Causeway you'd like to see. Checking the tide times isn't the only thing you'll likely need to prepare for a visit to the Giant's Causeway. Even if it's not raining, a raincoat always comes in handy while exploring the stones, to help shield you from the splashes of the Atlantic waves and the intense winds blowing their way across the causeway. Some sturdy footwear is also best. You don't want to be tripping over these columns in flip-flops, and there's also a half-mile long walk from the car park and visitor centre atop the cliffs down to the causeway itself, although that path is nicely paved, and a fairly simple stroll past some more stunning scenery. Later on, we'll take a look at a couple of the natural marvels that serve as surprising complements to the causeway itself on the walk down from the cliffs. But let's return to the legend of Finn McCool, and the mythological rivalry that prompted him to build a sea bridge all the way to Scotland. According to legend, there was a giant known as Ben and Donna, or the Red Man, who roamed Scotland, and who was often at odds with Finn McCool, the pair shouting and threatening one another from across the sea. Eventually, Finn threatened Ben and Donna to a fight, and began building the causeway across the water to reach Scotland, and finally put his rival in his place. However, when McCall finally completed his sea bridge and made his way across to Scotland, he caught a glimpse of the Red Man up close, realising for the first time that Ben and Donna was quite a lot bigger than he initially thought, having been seeing him from 80 miles away across the ocean. Immediately regretting his challenge to Ben and Donna, Finn McCool quickly ran back across the causeway to Ireland, hopefully escaping back home without being seen. Unfortunately, Ben and Donna did see McCool fleeing back towards Ireland, and so gave chase across the sea towards this point. At this point, Finn McCool looked like a goner, but salvation was at hand when he rushed into his home, and his wife, Una, wrapped him in sheets and told him to hide in the bathtub should Ben and Donna come knocking at the door. And that's exactly what happened, but Una explained to Ben and Donna that her husband was off hunting in County Kerry, and so invited him in for a drink and a tour of her home, all the while bigging up her husband as a match for the Red Man. As the clincher, Una then decided to introduce Ben and Donna to her and Finn's young son, who was lying in their bathtub. Of course, this baby was simply Finn McCool dressed up in sheets, and so Ben and Donna, now realising how big the man of the house must be, made haste and fled back across the sea towards Scotland, destroying the walkway as he ran along. So, that's the most popular story as to the origins of the Giant's Causeway, and why all that remains of that ancient mythological sea bridge are these few stones on the northern coast of County Antrim, and those across the sea on the island of Staffa too. On visiting the Giant's Causeway, you can learn even more about the illustrious mythology and geology of this famous landmark of Northern Ireland by visiting the brand new National Trust Visitor Centre up at the top of the cliffs, rebuilt in 2012 after the original 1980s Visitor Centre burned down at the turn of the millennium. There's actually a whole lot more to visiting the causeway than simply climbing the stones by the sea, and as we mentioned earlier, we'll take a closer look at the surrounding scenery in a little while. But there's even more to explore of the Giant's Causeway itself, and so we'll now make our way off this main area of stone columns and hop down to that smaller finger of the causeway that we can see just below. Now while we've explored the stories, both scientific and legendary, behind the creation of the Giant's Causeway, this site is today best known as an icon of Northern Ireland that's visited by tourists from all over the world. But tourism is a topic of much conversation when it comes to the Giant's Causeway. You'll notice that we're not the only people climbing the stones here, and while on this rather pleasant summer's evening, you wouldn't exactly call the Giant's Causeway busy, this famous landmark can get really rather packed. Nearly a million people visited the Giant's Causeway in 2019, and as you can see, this isn't the biggest landmark in the world, 
leaving relatively little room for so many people to explore the stone columns at their leisure on the busiest days throughout the year. Some say that the Giant's Causeway has become a bit of a tourist honeypot in the modern day, and a victim of so-called over-tourism as the number one place on many people's itineraries of a trip to Northern Ireland. But the story of tourism to the Giant's Causeway is actually a little greater than you might think, as people have been visiting this spot on the Northern Irish coast for 330 years. While, as we know now, the Giant's Causeway has existed for as many as 60 million years, its existence was generally unknown until the late 17th century, when it was visited by the Bishop of Derry. In 1693, a year after the Bishop of Derry's visit, the existence of the Giant's Causeway was announced to the world for the first time, and it gradually began attracting attention from a variety of people, including geologists, wealthy tourists, and artists. Art played a key role in cementing the Giant's Causeway in the Irish psyche, most famously coming to prominence as it was depicted in a series of watercolour paintings by the Dublin-born artist Susanna Drury in 1739. As leisure tourism became more popular and more widespread in the 19th century, more and more people began coming to the Giant's Causeway, often brought here by the old Giant's Causeway tramway that opened in the 1880s and ran between the town of Port Rush and the Causeway. While only a small part of that tramway remains today, tourists are still flocking to the Giant's Causeway every year, and contrary to what some may say, this is by no means an underwhelming natural landmark, because there's so much more to a visit to the Giant's Causeway than climbing and looking at the stones. And so having explored the most famous part of the Giant's Causeway, let's now make our way away from the sea and up the cliffs, to near where the car park and visitor centre are at the top of a stunning coastal footpath. So here we are roughly half a mile away from the Giant's Causeway itself, at the top of the footpath that all visitors walk along from the top of the cliffs down to the world-famous landmark. While the Causeway is the much sought-after destination for everybody walking along this path, the walk down from the top of the cliffs to the Causeway is a delight in and of itself, and a real welcome surprise if all you're expecting is to see the stones. So let's take a walk along this path, which at this point makes its way between the majestic cliffs of the Causeway coast and a wide open inlet of the Atlantic Ocean known as Port Naboo, or the Bay of Cows. Why exactly is the bay to our left known as the Bay of Cows? Well, once upon a time, the land beneath the cliffs by the sea here was grazed upon by livestock, most recently by sheep and cows, who were last seen on the Bay of Cows around 50 years ago. Ever since grazing animals left the area, the grass has become increasingly rank, with bracken spreading across the landscape, thought to threaten the surprising diversity of wildlife that you'll find along this footpath. As such, livestock have in recent years been brought back to the Bay of Cows, grazing animals intended to protect smaller wildlife that lives among the grasses of the Causeway coast, including varieties of birds, insects, and most notably, the narrow-mouthed world snail, a group of tiny and extremely rare snails that are only found on the Bay of Cows and three other bays along this part of the coast. Keen bird watchers will also want to keep their eyes out as they walk along this path down to the causeway, as everything from great cormorants to shags, oyster catchers, razorbills and more have all been sighted on numerous occasions at this haven for seabirds. The variety of wildlife at the Giant's Causeway is yet another reason to visit this famous landmark, but as we continue to make our way down the footpath between the cliffs and the Bay of Cows, how exactly do you get to this windswept part of the Northern Irish coast? Well, as we saw from our map earlier on, there are a number of settlements within easy reach of the Giant's Causeway. Just a few miles inland from here is the town of Bushmills, also popular with tourists as the home of a famous distillery where traditional Irish whisky has been brewed for around 400 years. From Bushmills, you can ride the last remaining section of the old Giant's Causeway tramway towards the Causeway Hotel at the top of the cliffs, with especially quaint little trains ferrying people back and forth along the line that reopened for business back in 2002. A little further along the coast to the west is the small village of Port Ballantry, 
and then the sizeable seaside resort of Port Rush, which is a good place to base yourself if you're visiting the Giants Causeway, and a number of other sites along the Causeway coast, including Dunluce Castle and Carricka Reed. Public buses run along the coast between Port Rush and the town of Ballycastle throughout the day, the last one stopping off at the Giants Causeway at around 6 o'clock in the evening, though do check the timetables to make sure your bus is running. Port Rush is easily accessible from Northern Ireland's big cities of Derry and Belfast by train, but many people who want to visit the Giants Causeway are also able to visit directly from Belfast. Countless tour operators running coach services to the coast here from the centre of the Northern Irish capital, making it especially easy to visit as a day trip from Belfast. A large car park at the top of the cliffs beside the Causeway Hotel and the visitor centre means that driving here is a good option too, and it gives you the flexibility to explore this spectacular part of the world at your leisure. And the very best thing about visiting the Giants Causeway? If you don't fancy stopping off in the visitor centre, then it's absolutely free. You could simply walk down from the top of the cliffs to the world famous stones whenever you like. Although it's probably best not to do so in the middle of the night. There's not much in the way of streetlights here. So, with all that in mind, I hope you're now itching to visit the Giants Causeway when you visit Northern Ireland. But as we've made our way around the striking Bay of Cows, we'll bring our walk around this beautiful part of the Emerald Isle to an end. An area steeped in history and legend, the Giants Causeway is a worthy icon of Northern Ireland, a fantastic place to visit, and without doubt one of the most magnificent natural landmarks you'll ever set your eyes on. The enigmatic complex of tens of thousands of stone columns, complemented by stunning cliffs and sea views. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're looking forward to visiting the Giants Causeway for yourself sometime soon.